God of War Ragnarok comes out on Wednesday, November 9th. Not very many games come out on a Wednesday. Typically, they come out on a Friday, so that's very interesting. Now, this is the most anticipated game of the year, right next to Elden Ring. Now, there's going to be a Who Wins Game of the Year, obviously. I think... God of War is a little bit more accessible to casual gamers, whereas Elden Ring is a lot more hardcore and difficult, and gamers might be more afraid to get into that game. However, the first open-world Souls game probably has a good chance of winning Game of the Year, but that's for a whole nother video. Now, could this be the final game in the God of War franchise? Could this be the final game in the Norse mythology franchise of God of War. Probably that. Is this Kratos' last game? We foreshadowed that in the first game. Will we face off against Odin? There are so many questions brewing in this game. And what happens to Atreus? Loki, what's going on with him and their relationship? Now, with all those questions, I can't wait for this game. You can't wait for this game. There's going to be no spoilers in this video. I know there's a lot of stuff going around right now of potential spoilers for God of War Ragnarok. This video is not going to talk anything about that. This is only going to talk about what we've seen in trailers, breaking down what we've seen, and catching you up on God of War so you know what you're getting into when you step into this sequel. So let's jump right in to what we know of in God of War Ragnarok. So God of War begins with the burial funeral pyre of Kratos' wife, Faye. She has asked you to chop down specific trees to burn her at the pyre. Now we later find out that those trees held up the barrier to keep gods and monsters out of Kratos' home. Faye's last words were to take her ashes to the tallest mountain in the Nine Realms, and that's the quest we begin. Before they even leave, Kratos gets into a massive fight who we later find out is Baldur, son of Odin. Now this happens within the first 20 minutes of the game, and it is an incredible fight sequence. Haymaker after Haymaker, both characters can't die, so they just go ham on each other. We learn that Baldur can't feel pain and he's here for someone. Kratos thinks it's Atreus, but it's actually Faye, who Baldur doesn't know is not alive anymore. Atreus is afflicted with an illness that we do not know what. He's coughing throughout the game, and Kratos looks down upon him as though he is weak and not strong enough. In the entire game, Atreus is trying to prove himself to Kratos, and Kratos is learning how to love and show affection to his son. It's, it's pretty deep. After Spartan raging about 500 times, Kratos eventually wins and the quest begins. From there, you meet Freya, the witch in the woods. She helps you and heals you on your journey, and she tells Kratos that he needs to tell Atreus the secret who Kratos is, and in part, who Atreus is. Kratos shrugs her off, and they continue on. We meet Brock and Sindri, two dwarven brothers who have separated due to family issues, and they separately help you to upgrade your weapons and armor. Incredible dialogue with these two characters. Super fun time. We also meet the world serpent, this giant snake that has been sleeping for thousands of years. Freya helps you to open the Bifrost, which has been laid dormant for a long time, and from there you take it to Alfheim, the elven realm, to get the source of light for Atreus' bow. You face off against what we think are dark elves and a lot of dark elves. Kratos steps into the light and gets mesmerized by Faze, his wife's voice. Minutes become hours and Atreus pulls him out of the light to save him. We learn that Atreus kills hundreds of dark elves by himself with his father's axe and Kratos is mildly impressed. Kratos and Atreus take the light to the mountain, reach the top, we see Mimir, Thor's two sons, and Baldur scheming to look for them. Mimir tells us the tallest mountain is in Jotunheim, which is impossible to get to because it's the realm of giants. We chop off his head and head out. We take Mimir to the Witch in the Woods, and we then find out who actually it's Freya. Oh, oh, we leave immediately in search of a way to open Jotunheim's portal. We get ambushed by Thor's children, Magni and Modi. We kill Magni, Modi runs away, and fights us later down the line. Atreus gets overcome with his sickness again, so we take him to Freya, who asks us to grab the heart of a troll from Helheim. The axe being useless in the icy realm, we go and grab the Blades of Chaos. Super emotional part in the game, and as soon as he grabs those blades, he gets infli afflicted with Athena, visions of Athena and his previous life. We grab the heart in Helheim, and Freya revives Atreus, telling him the truth that he is actually half-god and half-giant. Atreus gets mad at Kratos, ignores his commands, and goes and kills Magni. As we go through the Jotunheim portal, Baldur ambushes us again, and the portal gets destroyed, and we fall into Helheim. 
We learn Freya casts an immortality spell on Balder. Mimir finds another way to Jotunheim, but we must retrieve his missing eye first. We dive into the world serpent's belly to retrieve the eye, then get attacked by Balder again. Atreus' arrows pierces his Balder, breaking his spell because his arrows are wicked. Kratos gives Balder the option to leave after being defeated. Instead, Balder tries to kill his mother, Freya. Kratos kills Balder in order to save Freya. Freya vows to kill Kratos for killing her son. Atreus is like, what the heck? We saved you. Kratos tells Atreus he killed his father, Zeus, and we shouldn't continue the cycle of children killing parents. When we get to Jotunheim, finally, we see a prophecy that foretold our entire journey. They also say Balder was after Fae this entire time, not knowing she was dead, and Atreus' giant name is actually Loki. It also depicts a dead Kratos being held by Atreus. They finally spread Faye's ashes. We return home and learn that Freya is in search of her Valkyrie wings to try and kill Kratos, and that Baldur's death has caused the Fimble Winter, which means Ragnarok is coming. That was a lot to get through, so that is the synopsis of God of War. So let's get into God of War Ragnarok. It has been years since God of War, and Atreus is a lot older now. I mean, he's half-giant, remember? So he's taller, too. So by the trailers and how the previous game ended, it looks like we'll be fighting Freya maybe right off the bat early on, and definitely Thor. The Thor fight is going to be absolutely epic. Axe versus hammer, them colliding. I hope, and I hope we get this, that we get to keep Thor's hammer after we defeat him. I'm assuming we defeat him, but I hope that his hammer is added to our weapon tier and we can dual wield the axe and hammer, throw them both together like the Chaos Blades. That would be insane. I hope that happens. Atreus seems to be more rebellious now, unhappy with how his father has been treating him. Plus, his father has lied to him most of his life. And he's a teenager now, and teenagers are known for not listening to their parents. We're getting new realms to explore, Vanaheim, Svartalheim, and Asgard. And I'm, I'm hoping we'll face off against Odin. We've been foreshadowing this for a while, and where better to face off against Odin than Asgard? Now, our quest to find Tyr happens in this game, and it looks like it succeeds, because by the trailers, we find Tyr. Tyr stands up. He's ginormous, and he seems to be a big part of the sequel. We also get new characters, new giants to meet, which we have yet to meet an actual giant, and Fenrir, the giant wolf. A lot of giants. Ragnarok will be playing a huge role in this game. Ragnarok is a huge battle that takes place and kills the gods, and for them to be reborn again. My guess is that Kratos is Ragnarok, right? He will be the one killing and ending gods. That's my assumption. Don't know if it's true, but well, who better to be Ragnarok than Kratos himself? So you'll be going across the realms, I'm imagining, just killing gods, basically Gore the God Butcher. We now have more traversal with a grapple chain, which allows you for quick moves, added combos. You can use that grapple technique while fighting, bringing you closer to enemies with those Blades of Chaos. Now, I'm hoping we see Atreus' true power of giant and half-god come out. Will Atreus actually kill his father like this game has been foreshadowing? I don't know. It would be the perfect Greek and Norse mytho mythological ending, son kills father. We've seen that a lot. Now, what is pretty remarkable about this game are the accessibility features. They've completely rebuilt the UI, and it looks so clean. Plus, more accessibility options is always better. The game has over 60 ways to adjust the gameplay. We'll be underwater with mermaids and giant jellyfish. Hopefully, we can fight that jellyfish. Snowy landscapes. There's more gore, more blood, and more finishers. You actually get a finisher per each weapon this time, rather than every time you did a finisher in the first God of War, it would just go back to the axe or the Blades of Chaos. This time, there's a finisher for each weapon. I love it. Now, journalists have already played this game for about five hours, and, and they're saying it's, it's better than the first game. It takes the first game and it multiplies it by two to three, which speaks volumes, because the first game, I think, was the best God of War game in the entire franchise. So if you can make that even better, ooh, we are in for a ride. As soon as you start the game, you'll get a chance to watch an animated recap of the previous game to remind you what happened. And you're now in, we're now in Thimble Winter. It's three years, and we're just trying to survive. Kratos has his head down like normal, but Atreus wants to find out who he is, who is Loki, and explore the realms. He is matured now, but Kratos doesn't want anything to do with that. He wants to really just hide. 
I don't think he wants to kill gods anymore. I don't think he wants to kill Thor, kill Odin. He doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want war. Freya is mourning the death of Baldur, ready to get revenge after getting her Valkyrie wings. Odin's ravens will make a return, kill them all, just like in the first game. This is really cool. There are different shields. You now have the option to equip different shields for different areas and enemy types. This will add even more customization. Hopefully they have sockets so you can add perks to shields. There's a shield that takes a lot of hits and then you can push it back out kind of like Black Panther's armor. There's a shield that has a high parry chance, but if you miss it, it you take more damage. So there's, there's tons of different shields, which I love. Atreus has sonic arrows, which push enemies up into the air, leading to more combos. He's a seasoned fighter now, being trained with his dad for over three years. One thing that is important in the trailers is Atreus thinks that his mom, Faye, wants them to go and kill the gods. That's what he believes his mother's wish is. And who better to kill the gods than Kratos? And it makes sense because Faye was a giant, and Atreus being half-giant, the giants want the death of Odin. It's, it's the big war in Norse mythology, right? So who better to kill Odin than Kratos and Atreus? We see there's different enemy types, enemies coming down from the Bifrost. Are they sent by Odin, by Thor? Who knows? And in the trailer, we find out that Atreus has secrets of his own that won't tell Kratos. Which is funny because Kratos had secrets in the first game and wouldn't tell Atreus. Now the Valkyries are back fighting for Odin. I'm sure that's going to be a really hard thing to do. You're going through by boat around that Nine Realms area, just like we know where the World Serpent was from the first game. But now it's covered in snow. You got bigger enemies, bigger bosses, and the Blades of Chaos are back. I cannot wait for God of War Ragnarok. It's one of my most anticipated games of the year. And God of War is one of my favorite franchises of all time. If this is the end of Kratos, I don't know if I'm emotionally prepared for it. I don't know if they'll continue the series with Atreus and go that approach. I really hope we see Egyptian mythology and more. You can do so much. And they, they hinted at this in, in the previous God of War of different mythologies and going into their realms. I mean, you can do the Assassin's Creed style, right? And just go to different areas and different cultures. Oh, that'd be incredible. So I'm so excited. Let me know in the comments if you're so excited. Have you pre-ordered it yet? We want to know. I'll be streaming this game on Adorama XP the, the Thursday it comes out. So the day after it releases on our Twitch, link in the bio below. Like, subscribe if you haven't. I'm Josh Soleil, y'all. God of War, boy, is coming.